Uh, number one. Isabella, E lies opposite which side? E lies opposite which side? Yeah. Uh, P N with a line over the top. E is included. E is included between which so two sides? Uh, which two sides? Here's E. It's between two sides, so you call mm -hmm. that included. I think I hear Brody. What do you got? Well, uh, you need to t name some sides, and sides have two letters. So, what's e it? N N no. <laughs> Here's, I need this side and this side. P E and N P. No, P or N E. <coughs> okay, so. What we needed when you're talking about included is the two sides that that angle is between. Okay? A blank lies opposite PE. Here's PE. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Christian. Here's PE. What angle is opposite PE? Thank you. Because here's PE, I go across the triangle to the angle that's opposite. Uh, blank is included between PN and PE. Here's PN and here's PE. PN and PE. They're talking about this angle because it's between those two sides. What angle is that? Here's PE and PN. What angle is this? What angle is that? P. P. Side NE is included between two angles. Let's find NE. Here's NE. What two angles is this side between? N and E. At this side I have N and at this side I have E. This is included side. That means between. Included is a fancy name for between. This is an included angle. Okay. Side blank is included between P and N. Here's P, here's N. What side is between those two? Yeah. P, N with a line over it. Okay. Seven, vertex A should be paired with vertex. So here's A. Who does it correspond with or match on the other triangle? V. Okay, Andy. Vertex blank should be paired with vertex J. Here's J. Who matches J on the other triangle? Thank you. A, B, and blank are corresponding sides. Here's A, B. Uh, Chris B. V, who does A, B match on the other triangle? V, P. Good job. Blank and V, J are corresponding. Here's V, J. It has a measure of 8. Uh, Oscar, who does V, J match in the other triangle? Thank you. A, C. Triangle. A, C, B. Excuse me. A, C, B. Is that the same or congruent to triangle V, J, P? A, C, B. V, J, P. Are things going in the right order? Yes. C, a, B, start low, go to the top, come down the middle. C, A, B, is that the same as J, V, P? Yeah. Yes. It looks different, but they did things with corresponding sides together. Okay. Uh, number one. Martine, could you read one for us, please? Is A, B, P, 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 P,
Let's see, here's AB, here's JK. <clears throat> I have a 7 and a 7, a 9 and a 9, and I have the angle in between. So what does that tell me about these two triangles? Are they congruent? Yes. Because we don't know all the sides, but what do we know? A side and a side, another side and another side, and an angle in between. So this one matches this one, this side matches this side, and we know that this angle matches that angle. Can we tell for sure that those two are congruent triangles? What do we know? This is not side, side, side. Side, angle, side. Okay, so we can say yes. Side, angle, side. We weren't given information about the third side, but we were given enough. Side, angle, side. And that angle has to be included. It has to be between the two sides we know. Is angle B equal to angle K? Here's B, here's K. How do we know they're equal? They're both 90 degrees, yes. Both 90. Do you know that two sides and the included angle of ABC are equal to the corresponding parts? Yes. State the postulate. Oh, we already did. Side, angle, side. <clears throat> okay. Number five. In triangle PXQ, P, X, Q. Start out, go to the middle, go up, P, X, Q. What angle is included between the sides X, Q? Here's X, Q. And X, P. Here's X, P. Okay. What angle is between X, Q and X, P? So let's name it over here. This angle right here. How do we name that? We can't just call it X because this one has two sides. So how do we name this side? I need three letters. Q, X, P. Thank you. Q, X, P. You pick the letters on the ray and you make sure the X is in the middle. Angle, uh, I don't need to put it over there. And then in triangle RXS, here's RXS, what angle is included between XS and XR? What's this angle right here? If he named this one by going QXP, Jacqueline, how am I going to name this angle? SXR. From here to the middle to there. Okay, good. Is angle PXQ equal to angle RXS? So is this side equal to that side? Yes. How do we know that? Does anybody know what those kind of angles are called? They're made when two things crisscross. Okay. When two things crisscross, the opposite angles, they have a special name. Watch what happens if I make them big. Watch what happens when I make them small. They're both the same. Okay, so when, are these two the same? No, not necessarily, but are those two the same? Yeah, they have a name. They're called vertical angles. Ever heard of that? Foggy little memory. Vertical angles are the ones when you have two lines crisscrossing that are on opposite sides of that X. Okay? And they are the same. So we can say um, right here, yes. 
Oh, wait, where am I at? Yes. There are vertical angles. Is QX equal to SX? Here's uh, QX, here's SX. How do you know that? QX, SX, are they equal? What do we see that tells us they're equal? Three and three. So I can say that is equal to that. Yes. PX, is that equal to RX? PX, RX, are they equal? Okay, how do we know that? Five and five, so that side equal to that side. Uh, yes. Support the statement PXQ is congruent to RXS. Would you use SSS or SAS postulate? We know a side, an angle, and a side, and what's important is the angles included. It's between the two sides, or it's between the angles between this side and this side. So S A S. Right now, do 9, 10, and 11 at your table. Try and figure out what do we know? Do we know information about side, side, side? Or we know information about side, angle, side? I'm walking around. Okay, let's see what we have. <coughs> If I could have your attention up here, please. Ernesto, number nine. Are we going to use SSS or SAS? SSS. Here's one side. Here's another side. Here's the second. Where's the third? The middle shares a side, S, S, S. Okay. Uh, Tony, what are we going to use in number 10? Uh, side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Here's one side. There's another side. Here's an angle. Here's an angle. I need my other side in the middle again. Okay. Now, one of the trickier ones. Who wants it? I think, um, not me. Thank you, Jerry. Side, angle, side. So here's one side, here's another side. Here's an angle. Angle. What's the third side? One, two, three, again. Okay, there we go. Set that aside a minute. 
We have some videos to watch. We finally have Apple TV up and running. Who should we watch first? Let's go. Oscars. We're not doing ours first. No. 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 Oh my god, don't do it. Do Oscars. Do Oscars. Do Oscars. Oscars is funny. No. I want to see that. I want to see that. I'm straight to the Oscars. I think it's over here. There we go. Oh. Hey. You want to, no, I, you want to turn off the light back there? Yes. You see, it has, ah, it has <laughs> six faces, a whole bunch of skills on its back. I don't know how it's <laughs> But we found out its surface area. We used this formula right here to figure it out and got this answer 37.04 um, inches squared. So, how this creature was formed is. <laughs> The picture was born. It started as a pentagon and grew some five triangles and they connected together to form a pyramid. And we put glue and glitter on it to, you know, put it all together. Yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> nice to have helpers there. Okay. Now, how do I get? Oh, rats. Watch it again. And glue to put it together to you want rubies? Yeah. I think we should do Andy's and Martin's. It says it's only 36 seconds. What? This is the hexagonal pyramid, and to find the volume and surface area, she um, used six sides instead of four sides, and these are the equations that she used, six times AV times a half, and then six times VS divided by two. The volume is 134.55 centimeters cubed, and the surface area is... 208.8 centimeters cubed. Whoa, getting a little dizzy there. I don't know about you. Okay. So, how do I just get back? Escape. Oh, yeah. I gotta figure out this computer. Uh, yeah. Ready? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Chris. We're talking about our hexagonal prism. So, that's what we have here we have a six faced sided hexagonal prism, two bases. And we have six faces on each side. 
So what do you think about this, Chris? It's a pretty awesome shape. I mean, there's so many corners and it's just really good. Yep. Pretty remarkable how these 3D figures are made. You know, we made ours just with popsicle sticks and cod glue. But, you know, they're, they're pretty cool. And so that's what we have here. We have our formula. So we have our volume, which is 2.236.75. And our formula is V equals 3 squared by 8 squared H, by the height. And then for, we have the base, and then we have the other base, and then all the heights and the distance between them all. And then also for right here we have the face, and the other face, and the other face. And there's three other faces on the other side. Yeah. Those right here are just 3D figure. And yeah, each one right here is 4.5 inches. And that right there describes our 3D modular hexagonal prism. Thank you. Alrighty, my friends. Uh, there. You may recycle that paper. I'm putting points in right now. Did you do it? You don't need to turn it in.